face of the South African economy. As a result, we are notorious for prioritizing growth and production over sustainable processes. This has created an industry with a habit of wasting incredibly large amounts of water and polluting nearby water sources. The problem here is that in both cases, the pollutants end up in a river. This results in a polluted river. A prison kitchen has multiple dishes that require cleaning after use. This means that the leftover waste needs to go through the various processes to ensure it being disposed of responsibly. The kitchen waste ends up in the drain. The issue is very relevant to the waste lake river are as follows. Factories use water in the production for their food and for cooling machinery. What this means is that using the water they either release contaminated water back into the river or release heated water back into the significantly cooler river. The problem here is that either the water becomes contaminated or the heated water disrupts the oxygen supply and thus negatively impacts the ecosystem. Car wash establishments and restaurants use chemicals and greases respectively. This results in these commercial facilities needing a way to dispose of their used water. Polluted water runs into stormwater drains. Grease is disposed of through the drain as opposed to being disposed of by a professional company. Monetary penalties and water efficiency rewards will incentivize responsible usage of the river water and responsible disposal of polluted water. Waste storage units for disposal by professional companies is also a solution, and this works in all scenarios. Encouraging maintenance of piping and drainage system to ensure that water does not leak into the river. Chemical discard size to ensure that contaminated water isn't treated as normal water and released into the river. Agriculture is one of Cape Town's major sources of income. This results in less concern about environmental repercussions and more concern in maximizing profits. While the effect of agriculture in our water table must be limited, we need to spare thought for the jobs and money it generates for the city. In agriculture, farmers in the mountainous regions of Cape Town who tap into the rivers as a source for irrigation use this water by and large irresponsibly. Excessive amounts of water are used to irrigate plants which run off and are wasted. These farmers also use fertilizers and pesticides when irrigating their plants. Runoff carries pollutants. Fertilizers which run off cause nutrient enrichment of rivers and therefore eutrophication. Pesticides which run off could cause contamination of our water sources. Plantations are planted to face the sun and map the gradient of the land increasingly. This, along with the excess use of water, causes sedimentation and salt spills up due to erosion, encourages reed growth and requires maintenance to ensure the maintenance of the river's hydraulic capacity and water pressure so that water availability is greater downstream. Agriculture is an important part of the income of Western Cape, specifically and thus the problems of excessive usage and pollution are not easily solved. Over time, we will need to see a paradigm shift where proper farming practices are valued over increasing profits. A possible solution is the advocacy of responsible farming practices by encouraging the installation of micro-irrigation systems. Approximately 60% of water used for irrigation is wasted. Micro-irrigators, such as drip irrigators, can be more expensive to install, but can also be 33 to 40% more efficient saving money in decreased operational costs in the long term and carrying water or fertilizers directly to plant roots. More precise doses of fertilizers and pesticides also save money, can improve crop quality and prevent excesses running off into rivers. But what happens afterward is also important. Households with adequate water are prone to wasting it. 
Those without it have to suffer with water they cannot store because their buckets don't have lids. As was seen when we went to Westlake, the back of the mall led through food and detergents from restaurants. They added nutrients and waste over around the area with the growth of reeds. One possible way is to build enclosed areas around the taps so while people are filling up, they don't have to worry about dirt getting in. Is this enough though? Water is the substance of life, which is how I would have introduced the topic if it wasn't so serious. The solution that I would like to introduce is taking natural detergents and packaging them in reusable or biodegradable packaging and using leaf to distribute them in their community. And whilst they do so, collect recycled material from their homes so that they can offset the amount they receive against their accounts, thus promoting less damaging cleaning practices and also promoting entrepreneurship amongst young people. One possible way to is uh, okay. growth of reeds. Ah. Ah. Ah, uh, hold on. No, oh. no, that's it. And that, and that. That's me. Cut. Uh, so Take pressure. three. Third time. Like, the problem here is that in both cases, the Cut. pollutants. What? No, um, you didn't count in. The problem yeah. here. Is that it?